Hey guys, what's up? It's Four Dads Podcast, another episode, another edition with your host Don Julio and myself, Teeds. Coming up to 75 episodes, I think we're close to it. If we're not at 75, I don't really have the number in front of me. But I, th- I think we are. I think I think our last episode was 75. I, was- it's been top of my mind, but I think it, I think it is. But okay. either way, it's all good. We're going to celebrate the century. So yeah, right. Yeah, that's the that's the big one. Uh, yeah, that'll probably be technically what half a year away, basically 25, <laughs> 25 episodes. No, I mean, away. I don't know. I mean, if we, I mean, we can always pick it up and do. Do more episodes. It seems like it seems like after today's news, there might be some some more reasons to talk a little bit more about yes what's going on in golf. Exactly. And really quickly before we jump into that, just want to say over the last few weeks we have become brand ambassadors for Sunday Swagger. We got awesome. links where you can get fifteen percent off of any one of their polos. Very comfy polos. Very good quality. Very cool. What do you call it? Uh, like uh, designs, you know? Yeah. Uh, really sweet. And then Primo, same thing there. We got links. If you're watching this on YouTube, we have the links down below. Uh, if you're on uh, what is it, Spotify or social media or any of our social medias, you can go to our link tree and we have you just click on the link right there. It's 15% off of Primo pants, the joggers, yep. anything Primo, 15% off. Uh, I love the joggers. Julio's not the biggest fan. Uh, but I, I mean, I have, I haven't even, I haven't given them a try. So dude, you should, again, you should at like, least go to like, right. for Amazon, yeah. at least for Amazon, you could do a try before you buy and at least yeah. try them, see how they fit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just want to throw that out there cause I didn't last time and we've been an ambassador for a few weeks now and what's better than getting discounts every single time you purchase it while supporting us for dad's golf. Yeah. And also don't, don't forget about upside golf. Uh, that's been a longstanding partner of ours for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, remember guys like Bushnell just came out with another, with another, um, um, range finder. So did cube. So did, uh, um, what is it? Blue tea, right? Like they're all their, all their range finders are up there around 300 to $500. Like mm-hmm. this is a super high quality range finder that Patty, that Patty O'Shea, and an upside are offering you use four dads you get yourself 20 percent off like it's a hell of a deal for mm-hmm. i believe it's a 175 dollar range finder that does that has all the same capabilities as the top as you know the big brands that we spend countless amounts of money for so mm-hmm. get yourself mm-hmm. an awesome deal help support a, lo- a, a small local business mm-hmm. and you know let's let's use those let's use those codes Definitely, definitely. And I and I use his most recent range finder and I love it. You know, it's got the the uh uh great magnet, magnet grip, which is clutch. Uh and uh yeah, definitely recommend checking those all out. They're all on our link tree, so definitely, definitely check those out. But like Don Hilly yeah. was mentioning, there is some rumblings that have been going on today. I believe there was some big news dropping about the loyalty of the PGA tour players. For the longest time, there have been talks like, "Hey, what are the P- what is the PGA going to do for its PGA Tour players that stayed? Rory, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, Tiger Woods, all these players that did not go to live. What is going to be the benefit, the equity that they are talking about within the last year or so? No one knew what that meant. They knew that there was going to be something, some money in the distant future. They didn't know how it was going to be dispersed, and finally." There's been a report that came out by, I hope I'm saying this right, at Jay Corrigan Golf. Uh, he said, as part of its recent $3 billion fundraising round, the PGA Tour will start issuing equity payouts to its top players today. And here is what we have seen and heard about so far. The top projected payouts, which means there's probably people below this list that just aren't listed. The top one will be Tiger Woods. No brainer there. $100 million. Easy hundred million. Roy McIlroy will receive fifty million. Jordan Spieth thirty million. Justin Thomas thirty million. That was a little bit of a shocker. I know he's a, a top name player, but he has not been playing well the last year or so. But the crazy thing about this is how they get paid. It's not like here's a thirty million dollar check. Here's a hundred million dollar check, Tiger. These equity payments will vest over eight years, with fifty percent of them, the full payment, 
coming by the fourth year and another 25% by the sixth year and the remaining 25% of these payments by year eight. So if you want to break this down, Tiger Woods, if he's getting a hundred million, which is probably the easiest one to go off of because a hundred you're getting 50, he's getting 50, 50 million by the fourth year. So I don't know if they break that down. Uh, what is, what's 50 divided by four, you know, and 50, yeah, so he's getting fifty million by four years, and then another twenty-five million two years later, and then by the eighth year, he's getting the full one hundred million. So you have to play the PJ Tour eight more years in order to get these payouts. And now I'm just like, this is ridiculous. And if you think about it, even on the tweet that I'm talking about right now, the payments are small compared to what Liv had handed out. Tyrell Hatton got sixty plus million deal with Liv. There's no way he would have gotten anything close to that with these equity payouts. There's no chance. Um, and like Tiger Woods was pote potentially offered a billion dollars for live. Well, that there's no chance of getting that Jordan speed. I don't know what he was offered. If he even was Justin Thomas, same thing. There's no way even Roy McIlroy. I know we talked about $850 million, uh, talks with live, but even, uh, Greg Norman shot that down and said that it did not happen. We never even talked with him. Uh, so it is what it is. But the last thing I'll talk about before giving Julio some thoughts on this, because um, I obviously want to hear this. It finishes off by saying these payments will help the PGA Tour retain talent by locking up big name players with multi year <laughs> equity vesting agreements, like a startup would. In parentheses, there will be little to no liquidity in the secondary market, so players can't take the payment, sell shares, and then jump to live later on for a larger check. Don Julio, what are your instant thoughts after hearing? the equity payouts finally coming out, finally coming to fruition. We finally see what the PGA Tour was going to do. It's a, it's a massive waste of time. I mean, do you really think you're going to get eight more years out of Tiger to invest $100 million? No. Like, I, I feel like they just threw money just to basically put, you know, just to get people to shut up and also get all of us to say to shut up. But now it's like, there, there's no way. I mean, you're telling me that Tiger got Tiger got offered a, close to a billion dollars, if not a billion, and that's the best that you could do is a hundred million for for Tiger Woods. Yeah, someone who's literally re-revolutionized not just your organization but your entire sport. You know, and it's someone of color as well too, right? Like, it's not. It's. I mean, and I think and and I say that and I say that lightly because obviously it's like you know if we had i don't know i mean we don't know what it would have been like if tiger was white but again it's just like it's tiger woods it's it i mean you hear the name and it's just like you just think about the rich history the 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 mass the massive list of accomplishments in which he's done mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like yeah. rory Rory, I kind of feel like he got shafted. I mean, I feel like everyone's kind of getting shafted. Here. Everyone's like, like it a slap on the face, dude. I heard this and I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah, but also, but also too, I mean, you know, they they address it in swing too, right? Like, do you even think that the PGA, you know, players deserve a payout? Mm -hmm. I, I know, I know, I know, I know we spoke on this and that, you know, I know we kind of were like, we're kind of, going back and forth on it. I'm like, yeah, you know, they should, but shit, something like this, I'd be like, just keep it, dude. Like I'll make that just in sponsors, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll make that in sponsors. And it's like with the purses getting larger as well too. I, I mean, this isn't like, this isn't just given to you. Like you still have to earn this, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I feel, I feel for him. Like, I, I think that that's, Dude. I think that's way I think that's way below their one below their value, but also mm -hmm. to their core, you know, to their to their core values and what they stood for, right? Yeah. Yeah. The PGA could the PGA could have lost every single golden child and potential golden child that they have coming up just mm -hmm. because of this. And because of the fact that the PGA gave these guys an opportunity, they gave you know, they gave they they've kind of given them the platform to essentially grow the you know, they're themselves mm -hmm. through it. They've, they've said, Hey, you know what? The PGA is the best of the best. Like I want to play with the best of the best. Yeah. And that's not the case anymore. Like, let's just be, let's just be, let's just put, let's just call mm -hmm. it like it is. Do you it's, think that the payouts the have to do with that? That one, a lot of the top players have gone and two, the PGA has lost a lot of 
let's say like normal income, let's say over the last like five years, they average is just like $50 million that they would make. I know it's more, but let's just use that as a benchmark. But over the last like two years, they've only made about like 15 to 30 million because not as many people have been watching it because all of the top guys or majority of the top guys are gone to live. Do you think that that has played a huge factor in the number of how much that they are giving these players? I think that could be a very small part of it. I mean, again, like Liv isn't catching a lot of fire just because it's on normal TV and CW, right? right? right and right, right. like what you said, it's, I mean, there's not a huge, there's not a huge following that's going to live. I think it's more of the people who download the app, like you and I watch it on our own time. Yep. But PGA events just grab, they grab attention for any golfer, right? And it's like, because it's so accessible with ESPN, the PGA, you know, or the, the golf channel, like, right. TNT, it's it's everywhere, right? And it's on all the times in which we're all just sitting down trying to wind down or just waking up in the morning. So mm -hmm. it's accessible. So I really don't feel like they've lost anything. If anything, I feel like they've gained more views because of the fact that people actually want to see what are they trying to do? What are they trying mm -hmm. to do to better that experience? What are they trying to do to to make these, these events more uh, attractive to... Mm -hmm to their viewers, but also to reward the, the players. Right. Yeah. So again, we saw, we saw the increase in, in purse pay payouts, right. We're starting to see, um, we're starting to see, you know, like the bidding, they're actually advertising bidding now with right? DraftKings and, you know, all these uh, bar stool and all these other guys mm -hmm. who are coming in. So it's like, they're pushing the money, but again, the players, I feel like I feel like with what the players have done to continue to make the PGA what it is before live, like there's no I don't think that there's any amount that you could possibly give them that would seem um that would be satisfying based off of what they just passed mm -hmm. to to right. stay there. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, unless unless you were just to match them, right? Yeah. And just say, you know yeah. what? Hey, you've earned it, right? And then with that, like, again, with someone like Tiger, let's just let's just continue to use Tiger. Like, we know Tiger's maybe got three years, maybe. If right? only maybe two four. tournaments a year, right? Yeah, just a few yeah. big tournaments. Yeah, it's like it's like give him give him a role for like how to make the PGA better. Keep him in the play, right? Just like how Michael Jordan is with with the Hornets, right? He bought ownership. Now he sits down with the franchisee guys and say, no, nah, we can't do that. Like we got to keep the game about the game. You know, it's yeah. like these dudes, it, it, you want to put it into like a corporation type, type of, you know, um, scenario, like listen to your dudes who are on the front lines, right? Yep. The guys who are actually, who actually have the experience, who know what the player or who know what the fans want, who understand what your customer is like raving about. Yeah. Take from them. Right. With that, bring them on board to either be part of your growth team, your innovation team, like marketing, whatever it may be. These aren't these aren't just dumb, dumb jocks. Right. Okay? These dudes went to college. They got they got degrees in something. They they know the business. Utilize that instead of bringing in these 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 dinosaurs who mm -hmm. have only seen the game from one perspective of when Arnie was playing from when, you know, Tom, Tom Watson was playing, Gary Player, all these guys. The game's changed so much. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, forget yeah. the tucked-in shirts. Forget the collars. Forget the the pants on the weekend. Like, understand that the game itself has changed because of 2020. Mm -hmm. The PGA is the benchmark for what golf is. It's time for you to adapt. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. That's my – I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my spiel. That's your spiel. Yeah, I mean – all very good points. I just feel like this is probably the first time that the PGA Tour has really kind of giving a contract to players to finally make guaranteed money. Let a, don't get me wrong; it's it's pennies on the dollar and what they're worth. But if you think about it, the payment it even says it here: like these payments will help the PGA Tour retain talent by locking up these big name players with multi year equity vesting engagements, which means they won't be able to you know, uh, take the payment and then sell their shares and then jump to live on a lar on for a larger check later. They have to stick with this if they want to get this payout. So 
Yeah, but yeah. then you're taking. But then you're taking. I mean, sorry. Go go ahead. Finish. finish no, I'm just point. gonna say like it, it's. It seems like it's kind of locking up these players in a bad way. Like you're yeah, not giving that's them any. Exactly what I was gonna like, say. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's the first time that you're seeing it. But at the same time, it's not what they deserve, in my opinion, from what they yeah. what they potentially could have done, how much they could have gotten uh, at during the other on the other side of live. Uh, and like I'm sure when we talked about, oh, imagine you know if PGA Tour players were to get contracts, we weren't thinking of being low ball this low. <laughs> you know, we're like, oh, we're, yeah. we're thinking about it for the benefit of the players to have guaranteed money that way. But it's. It's not I, that. It's not. I mean, yeah. this isn't even guaranteed. This isn't guaranteed. This is. This is like a. You know, like a startup, right? Like you're. 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 You're signed on board. We're going to give you sixty five. You know, sixty five thousand shares mm -hmm. of whatever the company ends up. You know, ends up doing when we open in market, right? So again, you're. That's kind of what the PGA is doing here. I mean, the PGA is still a nonprofit, so it's like. So it's mean that they're giving you fifty percent. So let's say they're giving them a hundred million dollars worth of shares per se is what you're, is what I'm hearing. Is that what you mean basically, by equity? And so that could go up gonna, or look, that can go up or down basically, right? Depending on how. Yeah, it, it could go up or down, or it's like again, if you end up if you end up getting terminated or you leave, right? Mm -hmm. Then your shares are automatic or automatically retracted, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's where it's like it doesn't even make sense because how much more is the PGA going to expect to grow in the next three years? What are you like? Right. What are they going to do? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's been. One, it doesn't seem like it's been a priority for them to make any changes since Liv has come out. They've just kind of been taking little pieces where they have music on the range now. You know, they right. they opened up shorts during pra during practice rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's like really that's really like oh my god, this is so cool! Like this makes me want to spend the two hundred two hundred dollars to go to this event plus yeah. plus travel and stay, and stay right? And to see parking this. And, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. exactly. Like there still isn't that incentive where at least with live, not only are you seeing two types of rounds, you're seeing like a team round, right? Where mm -hmm. everyone, everyone's points are, are accumulated, but then the last day is like, it's a match, right? Mm -hmm. So it's everyone mm -hmm. against everyone. There's just different, there's just a different variety of games that you're, that you're watching. True. Um, where again, what we're watching here is just a straight stroke play for four days, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but that's again like here here's my thing is like this is kind of like <laughs> the best way I could think about it top of, like top of mind this is kind of like a Daniel Jones contract with the New York Giants for 40 million to basically Ooh. sign up for 5 years of Ooh. losing yeah. yeah you know like yeah. that's that's the one thing that kind of like if I was on that end of the stick it's like okay you're you're giving me a place i'm getting paid i'm getting paid good right obviously i could still get my earnings from performance per, you know performance based incentives but i can't even i can't even entertain the idea of going somewhere else so it's like now you're now you're cutting a leg off of these players by allowing them being that they represent themselves as you know um uh what is it uh, sole proprietors, you know, mm -hmm. within the PGA mm -hmm. that now they can't even go market their talent. So if they did want to entertain the ability to go to live, they really can't do it mm -hmm. like at all. Right. You know, so now it's like, yeah. okay, well, I guess I really have to stay with the PGA, which it seems like now it's a sinking ship. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it, like a it's, desperate last ditch effort, you know, to exactly these players and, and, and that last ditch effort, like that, Again, that money may not even be guaranteed. Like, right. you know, that's the that's the big difference. Is you're talking mm -hmm. about, you're talking. So the way that I see it is, the PGA is trying to essentially save save some money and also earn money at the same time to basically say, okay, here's this payout. Like, thank you. Like, here's here's your vested payout for this year, right? So you have to commit to an entire season based off of how that goes. Then here's your here's your you know. What here's your twelve twelve million twelve billion dollars that you're gonna get, right? Yeah. Um or whatever that number may be. I just sorry, I don't know why I thought of twelve million, but whatever the number may be, here's your here's your amount. Thank you, right? On top of what you just earned 
within within the PGA. For I'll some, like, yeah, yeah, for some that's great. No, no, say, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for some that's great. For others, it's like, dude, what the heck? I, all I'm all I can say is I'm sure John Rom is smirking and just having a a Don Julio right now and just sitting back um, next to his freaking you know couch I'm sure they're I'm sure they're all apartment. I'm sure they're all opening up their phones right now and being <laughs> like can you believe this shit no I, I mean I, I feel like the guys who are on live are still cool with the dudes who are you no know, they're cool but know? I'm saying he's happy that he left to get the money that he thought he was worth yeah I'm not oh, saying that like specifically yeah yeah, yeah specifically like <laughs> wow that was yeah. close oh uh, yeah know, like, I mean it just se- I mean it just seems like I don't know. Maybe Victor. Maybe Victor should have taken that offer sooner. Maybe Ugh. I don't know, dude. Like it just seems like everyone from the PGA should have just taken it, being that Jay Monahan was going to end up, mer- you know, merging it all. Mm-hmm. They can still play the. They can still play the four tournaments a year that actually fucking matter, right? Like all the all these top dudes have placed and have earned their exemptions to be there. So you should have just taken it, being that. All the live guys are coming back anyways to play in the tournament where the where I mean again the the level of play just kind of went to another went to another level. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I kind of off subject, but I just had this conversation with my dad. Like he was like, you know, he's like, did Scotty win this weekend? I was like, he did. He's like, what do you think's going on right now? I was like, I don't know. It's like it's good to see him dominate, but also too is like, do you think that if do you think that if like Guys like Brooks Kepka, John Rahm, DJ, like we're still around that he'd be winning by the landslides that he is, mm-hmm. you know, because it's a huge question. You know, it's it, I mean it's no it's no hate towards it's no hate towards towards yeah, towards but it's Scotty. Just it's just it's just facts. It's just yeah, it's just yeah. that what if, right? Like, I mean, yes, he's playing phenomenal golf, like absolutely incredible golf. And golf is one of those sports where it's all on you. Like there's no one, there's nothing else that's going to do it. But when you think back to, you know, the, the art or the Arnold Palmer invitational six holes, six holes, Shoffley went with no birdies to basically make a, to, to basically have a playoff six holes. You're telling me out of those three other dudes. I mean, even if we were to include mm. Bubba Watson, you're telling yeah. me those potential four wouldn't even go, would it would go six, six holes without making a birdie. Right. Yeah. Not. Very unlikely. Let me just say that. And that's what I'm saying is, you know, like, again, kind of like what we, you know, what we spoke about, like in our last episode, Scotty, we could literally just see Scotty just absolutely dominate these next tournaments leading up to the players. And then all of a sudden here comes, here comes big bad Kepka. Here comes Rom. Here comes the rest of these guys. And it's like, <laughs> is it going to be the same performance? Is it going to be as close? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Right. Oh my gosh. Like who's going to be, who's going to get second place? Yeah. Oh man. I mean, okay. yeah. I, I spoke. I mean, I spoke a lot on that. But like, what are what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on uh on the payouts? I thought they got shafted as soon as I saw that. I was like, ooh, dude, I'd be pissed. I'd be so pissed. All this loyalty, all this oh, you know, PGA Tour loyalty. Yeah, you're gonna get your payout. You're you get what you deserve. And here's a nickel. We just made a hundred bucks. But here's your nickel for all your hard work. It's like, dude, I would be so mad at just how much you know how much the pga tour makes in general especially as an employee you have an idea and you're like what are you doing here like oh and it's not like you said it's not even guaranteed i'd be very frustrated that i didn't make the jump personally uh because you're not gonna you're unless you're roy McIlroy, where the money isn't an issue at all like he's set for life except for like justin thomas he'll be fine you know uh uh, I mean, I didn't even see Scotty Scheffler on there, which I was kind of surprised about. But um, it must have been how they were over the last like three years. And if you over the last like year and a half, Scott or two years, Scotty has really been up there. But before that, it hasn't. He hasn't really been doing. He kind of came out of nowhere, really. Just started winning all of a sudden. Um, so, but yeah. So last year, so last, or I'm sorry, in twenty in two thousand in twenty twenty two. The PGA Tour reported three point nine billion dollars in revenue. Last year in twenty twenty three, they lost uh, four mil- four million. So, oh, or I'm sorry, they, I'm sorry, they actually so they went from what did I, what did I say from three three point something point, billion? Yeah, three point two. 
to then now last year they ended up doing 1.5 it could be oh. dude, i'm telling you it could be they're losing money that's probably why they didn't put weren't able to pay out as much as they wanted to that's my but guess do you real, but like do you realize how much a like a billion dollars is i a mean lot. for your for like your for like your top oh dudes. i know i'm telling you like yeah hundred dollars to get that's like penny. a nickel like it's that's what it's i'm saying pen, like, i mean it's like it's like pennies it's like pennies on a dollar for them yeah exactly you know Exactly, like, and that's just a year. You, that's not like all the years. Or like, like where's that money going? No, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah, I hear you, dude. I hear you. I mean, like, it's small, and good. then, and then on top, I don't know. I mean, I might be, I might just be it saying some bullshit jargon, sense. but yeah, no, yeah, it's, just, like, it's, it's they, just. I mean, this is this is what I'm getting. Well, this is what I'm getting from. This is what I'm just getting from. Uh, um, from Google. Right, and so it's public, right? So you can see that it's not like it's you know, yeah. And and it oh, says, wait, and it wait, says, are you saying are you saying twenty twenty four? It's one point four or twenty twenty three? No, no, twenty twenty three was was one point was one point four billion okay. that they ended up okay. that they ended up doing. But in twenty twenty two, they did th they did three point two billion dollars in revenue. That's insane. I wonder what it's going to be this year, dude. I wonder. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. The, but like that. So it breaks it, it kind of breaks it down, right? So it says like they do, let me see here, they do 660 60 million just on domestic and international media rights, um, plus another 634 million in commercials and partnerships. It says Tournament Players Club is one point, does one point, I'm sorry, not even 1.4, I'm sorry, it does. 142 million for them. Corporation licensing does another 150 million for them. Investments, investments, 21 million. <laughs> Dude, that Whoa. is that is so small. So it's like I like in the investments column, be like, what are the investments? Like, what do they what do they invest in? They spent 120. Sorry, I'm trying to get my freaking light to get it fell off. They've spent 127 million to pay someone to come out with how much they're going to pay everyone in equity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, no idea. That's ridiculous. Wow, they're really yeah. they're really pushing to invest in this in this uh, PGA tour, man. My goodness. Wow. Yeah. I I mean, again, dude. Like, I think this is the problem when you have, you know. <laughs> When you have such a massive gap in generations from people who are actually leading things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I feel like even now, me being you know me me working in in tech for the last you know seven plus years um, and seeing what's on the video side of things, there's so much you can do, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. much you can do to yeah. to really drive revenue. I mean, to next levels, and I've seen it with companies who are you know in esports like it's yep. it's crazy it's just again trying trying to trying to get someone to kind of see beyond kellogg's to you know <laughs> tony right. to like tony the tiger you know uh <laughs> ice cream is or i'm sorry cereal is is <laughs> night and day difference you know <sighs> yeah that's crazy dude i one thing I do also say, I think we should move on. We talked about that. There is a lot we can we can talk about it later. Think about it and come and talk about it next week again, especially with more of this information coming out. But I really want to talk. Think the, I think the real thing. I think the real thing we need to talk about is how dope are those irons that you hit? Well, I was going to talk about that, but stupid freaking light, dude! Like this, I have it connected. Why are you not? Come on, you stupid thing. So I keep going on and off. You're not gonna see my face. So, okay, yeah. So, so I was fortunate enough to get. <laughs> anyway, I think, uh, I think you got I was... a little. I think you got a poltergeist going on now. I know, dude. It's <laughs> ridiculous. All right, whatever. We're just gonna go without it. So, I showed up to um, the driving range on Monday, and I was like, Brandon, let me try your Voda irons, or Voda, excuse me, <clears throat> your Voda irons. And then he's like, I got Bryson's here. You want to try Bryson's? And I was like, Really? I'm like. Would would that be all right? Like, I'm like I want, I want I want to do a video. I want to record myself hitting these shots with these irons, see how they are, and tell some people. And he's like, I'm like, would that be okay? Like, if I like record and you know, like tell people, hey, I'm hitting the irons. And he's like, 
Well, he did tell everybody that he only had one set, and he does have two, and this is the other set. And then he looked over to his buddy Tom, who I think is like the main guy behind the irons, and he's like, "Are we Tom. out? Are we out to like? Are we actually out to like for everyone to know about?" It? He's like, "Yeah." So okay, yeah, go for it. So I took out his eight iron and do this the shaft, his golf shaft. I'm gonna say golf shaft so I don't get any. That's what she said. Moments. Uh, his golf shaft was so thick and so strong and so and, and apparently like Brandon was even telling me he's like, you you should be swinging an extra stiff shaft. You, you're you're. I told you that. Well, I I do with my driver, but I don't with my irons. And he's like, I and so. Dude, whenever I get my Avoda iron suit, it's gonna he's gonna fit me, and I'm gonna get all set up with that, and it's gonna be with an extra stiff. I'm gonna go with LA golf shafts, but anyway. So I'm hitting Bryson's iron suit, and the, and they're the bulge irons. They're the bulge ones. They're ones that that Avoda does not sell. Avoda will not sell these irons because it's too expensive, and there's a copyright issue or something along those lines to the public. And I was even asking him like, "Hey, are all these things you know like?" Um, you know, 3D printed like we talked about last week that we thought, you know, they're all going to be all 3D printed and, you know, the bigger sweet spot and all this stuff. And apparently they're not, but these things are freaking pure. Bryson's iron suit. I had never swung his clubs before. And I was puring these things, man. Like I was hitting these so well in my, in my stupid Mevo for whatever reason was literally giving me like 50 yards. Like it was so wrong because like, at Dragonfly, it'll it has flags, you know, of like the distances and stuff like that. And there's a little like chart that tells you on that day how far it is if they move the range back or forward on the grass or whatever. And it was about 245. And it was telling me that I was hitting my eight iron or Bryson's eight iron 230 yards. And I'm like, there's absolutely no way. Bryson said he hits his eight iron 220. There's no way that I would hit that with that speed. But I was smashing it, and it was going a lot shorter than the distance. But, like, my misses, you hit it to the right. It kind of has, like, the bulge that he was talking about. Or not he was talking about, but how people were speculating how, like, the bulge on your uh, driver and woods, that it's not there on the irons because irons are just flat. It's It helps you with those misses, dude. Like, I was very rarely that I miss it. And the worst part about the whole thing is I get back to home only to find out that my receiver wasn't turned on. So I'm sitting there in the video doing like this. And I'm like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. I didn't get that. But fortunately, I got the end. I got that all set up. So I was able to create a video. It's out right now. Um, they're awesome, dude. They are so pure. And then Bryson, and then not Bryson, uh, Brandon, he has uh, the pink page Spironic shaft iron. So apparently they only offer the pink shaft or the black shaft for LA Golf. And um, they are great, dude. They are sick. You can see the bulge. I, I kind of tried to show it in the video. Uh, you could see it a little bit. It's very it's very small, but like you can definitely tell it's not flat. Uh, uh -huh. but, uh, but yeah, dude, they were sick. And, and them being rare and me being like probably like the only other person besides Brandon to actually like hit him in the world makes you feel a little special, you know? Not yeah, gonna lie. yeah, not gonna lie. You had you had your you had your uh, your lab your lab golf putter moment <laughs> like what I had <laughs> yeah dude yeah no, dude, I mean I mean just from the tracer alone I was just like he's not tugging him left what the heck dude <laughs> like dude these things were just it was insane and then even Brandon's I was hitting Brandon's pretty well and he's and his irons were uh, three quarters of an inch shorter than mine. Uh, than what I play, which I play half up. He plays a quarter inch down. And uh, I was hitting those pretty well, dude. And I was like, okay, I want to at least get fitted to see, to make sure these are going to, you know, work because I want to go with the combo length. And, oh, man, I'm really looking forward to. So ex to so explain that to me. So explain that to me. Go go into kind of a little bit of detail. Like, what is the combo length? What What is that? So first off, single, the same length irons is obvious. You know, I think they go off like a six yeah. or a seven iron and they're all the same length. The combo length goes, I believe, from the eight iron to the pitching wedge is all nine iron shaft length. And if you go to, if you go into their wedges as well, if you get if you get with their wedges, then it goes from eight iron to like the all the like their sixty degree, all their wedges. All of those irons will be like an eight or a nine degree or nine uh eight iron or nine iron length, all the exact same. And then the rest of them, so like you have like your seven, your six, and your five. 
those will be regular length, the traditional the gaps, you know, the shorter of it. So that's what they say by combo, where your scoring irons are going to be the same length compared to the longer irons, which are actually going to have the traditional lengths, to my understanding. Um, I definitely am not. So, so it's going to be like a 30, so it's going to be like a 36 inch, 36 inch golf club from, from I think it's sand eight, wedge. I think it's eight to pitching. Yeah, from no, from lob wedge all the way like the eight iron. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they decided to go that route with that instead of just having like a standard club set where you could well, go you through can. a full fitting you process. Can. If you want, if you want to do that, they have they have like a custom option as well. I don't think it's any extra, but that's basically where you can input what the lengths you want. And if you just want traditional, just type in the traditional. And they're literally making them in the shop, which is awesome because Brandon is literally, I was like, I'm like, dude, what do I call you in the video? He's like, I'm the head fitter. Uh, and he's like, wait, give me like a couple weeks. And they're trying to send out and create their own fitting packet or not packet or what do you want to call it? Like box where you can set it up with set up the different irons and pop out the heads and, you know, try different shafts and see what works. Oh and, yeah. Like uh, a fitting cart. Yeah. They're trying to get one of those. And, uh, he was telling me, dude, and if, and like within a month or so, he's going to fly out to LA to fit Josh Allen and Saquon Barkley. Um, Saquon. Apparently, apparently, uh, Nate shot has already bought a pair, I bought a, a thing of irons. They were like, they got an order. They're like, Nate shot. You ever heard of Nate shot? He's like a professional gamer. Mm. No, okay. He's like one of the top gamers in the world of shooting games. I don't even watch those, but I, I've heard of the name. Uh, and then there was who else was it? The guy who showed. If you looked at the the thing today, uh, a vote of golf. They were. Let me just check it up on Instagram. Actually, uh. Brandon was telling me about this guy, and um, his name is D. Cooper. Drew Cooper. Have you ever heard of Drew Cooper? Uh -uh. Uh, he's a long driver, I think, but he just got fitted. He got 42,000 followers on Instagram. Um, Interesting, man. That's That's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so he's, they're starting to get some orders. They're on back order for the, what is it for the, uh, the Chrome colored or Chrome look. Cause they're all for Chrome or matte black, uh, for the iron uh, heads. But, uh, yeah, dude, uh, I'm happy for him. I'm stoked. I, I want him to do well. And I would, I can't wait to get my hands on a, on, on some of these irons because dude, it's, uh, I'm finally feeling comfortable with my irons, but like I'm still pushing them all left. I don't know why. It is what it is. And and Brandy was even like, like at the end of the day, you're gonna get used to what works with your clubs, and you're gonna like fit your swing to that. And uh, I can't wait for these irons, dude. It's gonna be sick. And and then I I doubt I'd have them by next month, but that would be awesome if for whatever reason because they're back ordered now. So I don't know. I think within a month or so they'll get them, get them back. That's crazy though um but that's super cool i know i was i was super stoked um but i also want to talk to you about one other thing before we jump to the very end of the podcast and talk about live adelaide really quickly but were you able to see the myrtle beach classic qualifier did you see that video you see it you remember how like myrtle beach they were offering youtubers an opportunity to play in a pga tour event do you remember that? It was like three months ago. It was like, oh, yeah, thing. yeah, I remember they're talking about it. And like, they couldn't talk about it until like this day when, you know, they were going to post it on their YouTube and they did. So I'll go over that with you. So I watched it and they put it uh, as a premiere event. So you couldn't like fast forward to the end and watch and see who won. You had to like watch it with everybody. And it was like a two hour video and it was pretty well done. I mean, they didn't zoom in on their shots, which was kind of lame, but, uh, you know, you had Peter Finch, uh, you had Turk Pettit, who apparently was a live golfer. I'm trying to get back onto the PGA Tour now. Uh, Matt Adkins, <laughs> who I'd heard about, um, a Monday qualifier guy who had struggled for a while and finally got onto the PGA Tour and was able to get a few starts. Uh, mm -hmm. George Bryan from Brian Bros. Yep. Um, yep. And then let me see here who else they got. Uh, they had obviously Fat Perez, mm -hmm. uh, Dan Rappaport. From four oh, wow. play pod, yeah. Cole yeah. Lance from Busted Jack. They had one spot nice. for for each of them. So I think for Busted Jack, they did like a uh 
a head to head on like their YouTube yeah. and whoever won was going to play. Cole Lance won that. Grant Horvat was in there. Luke Kwan from uh, Good Good. He had mm-hmm. an opportunity and uh, Micah Morris. Okay. So they had, a, and then also they had, a, they sprinkled it in with some uh, corn fairy guys as well. So it wasn't just strictly YouTubers, but I'm going to spoil it for you. I know. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Dude. George Bryan shooting four under <clears throat> going into the final hole, par five. He's shooting four under. Matt Adkins is shooting two under. They're in the same group, same pairing, the last pairing of the day. And George Bryan hits a fairway. Great. Uh, Matt Adkins, I think, is think his name is Matt? Yeah, Matt. Matt Adkins, fairway as well. Great. They both lay up. George wants to play it safe, like there's a, a water in front of the green, so it's not a smart play to just go for it, you know? And George has a two-stroke lead, so he's playing it safe. Lays up, great. Matt lays up, short, ends up hitting before George Bryan. He's on the green, probably about 9 or 10 feet away. Puts himself up for a birdie opportunity. George Bryan pitches, and his ball rolls off the green into the water. Ends up bogeying the hole. Matt Adkins drains his 10-foot birdie to tie him at three under. One loses a stroke, one gains a stroke. And just like that, I, I literally had the tweet ready to go. Like, George Bryan, it was always you. Congrats, you know, on Twitter. <laughs> and I literally had it ready to go. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? He's going to blow this. So it goes to a playoff hole. And George Pars and Matt wins out of the birdie. And it was insane because I think Matt Atkins was coming off of back-to-back bogeys because they were tied. He came off back-to-back bogeys and then ends up somehow winning. The worst, take a guess at who you would think the worst score and worst player of that uh, of the tournament was. Worst player and worst score. What would you what would you take a guess? Worst player, I'm gonna have to say as in like who played that day the worst, obviously. Yeah, I would have to say worst player probably Luke Kwan. Um, worst score. I'm gonna have to go with Michael Morris or Grant Horvath. Ding, ding, ding! Michael Morris, fourteen over. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because those. I mean, they're great golfers, but Micah's posted enough enough turn or enough content of him at tournaments where it's like he puts too much reliability on that two iron because he's just trying to play. Oh my gosh! Yeah, knowing 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 that he has. The distance, right? But R5, the thing is, is like, iron. come on. Yeah, but the thing is, is like he's trying to play draws. He's trying to play cuts, and it's like two iron is not really made for that. You know, like mm. if I if I hit a draw with my two iron, I'm like, whoa, because normally it's just dead straight. Like, yeah, I got to put it right where I'm at because it's not going to move a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what that that and and, and even George. Even George Bryan, like they got into like a little bit of an argument on one of the YouTube videos where he like called him out and was just like, dude, if I had if I had the ability to hit a driver the way that you do, like I would remember that. I, I, yeah, I would never even carry that. And like you could see Mike is like, dude, just let me play my game. He's like, I'm just telling you from like pro to pro, dude, like what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You have so much distance. He's like, and he even brought up like Bryson. And I, I, I think I'm mm-hmm. for those of you that are watching this, if, if I'm wrong, like, like don't bust my balls about it, but. I, like he literally was like, "Why do you think Bryson like dials in that driver so much? Because it's his great, it's his greatest, asset. you know, it's it's it, yeah, it's it's yeah, exactly, it's his greatest asset to his game. So the fact that he's able to hit a ball four hundred yards and have a comfortable wedge, you should be locking in your wedges like the same, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and it's just yeah, like I don't know, man. It's uh, I'm not surprised. I'm I was. What did Luke? What, what did Luke Juan do? Luke Kwan shot a six over. Grant Horvat shot a seven over. Bat Perez, nine over. Uh, Cole Lance, uh, Jack, or Busta, Busta Jack, 11 over. Uh, Dan Rappaport shot four over. Uh, not bad. No, not bad at all. And then let me see here. Um, the was biggest, it a one-day qualifier? It was a one-day tournament. One-day tournament, yeah. 
Um, the biggest shocker, in my opinion. 14? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was one just, day. Well, he I, must well, have just wanted to put a bullet in his head after that round. <laughs> <laughs> 14? I mean, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Like, my – my first, my first tournament, um, first real big tournament that I had done, I absolutely shit the yeah, bed. But yeah, but, but he's actually played pro tournaments before, you know. By pro, no, no, I, mean, I, like, I know, but, I, but, yeah. but I'm just well. I think the ability, right, like to play something bigger afterwards is like that's always like, whoa, you know. Um, yeah, that's fourteen. Holy smokes! Well, yeah, dude. I was I, I was watching uh, Mr. Short Game on uh, on YouTube after, and he was saying that this he's played at the course, and then they call it the Q at Myrtle Beach, and there's a lot of trees, and Micah is more of a spray kind of guy, not not in a bad way. I'm not saying it like he can't control as much, but he he would do a lot better at a course that was more open compared to this course, which had a lot more trees and was much more narrow. If you miss, you're gonna see it, and he struggled with that all day, and. That makes sense, but in my opinion, there were two biggest like shockers, or I was impressed with. Peter Finch shot a one over, shot amazing. He was like, I barely work out, you know, like I, I didn't really do too much. To He's just like Joe Damon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just happy to be here. And then, dude, they, they had a, I think he was 15 years old, a 15 year old lefty named Tyler Watts, and this dude was smashing the ball. He shot a one under. He was absolutely on it. I'm like, bro, is this kid going to take it? You know, everyone, of course, was thinking George Bryant had the biggest chance. But uh, it was really cool. I definitely recommend you taking a look at it, you know, just put it on the background, you know, during whatever. Um, because it was it was pretty cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was waiting for that, and it finally popped up. And I saw I was like, oh, cool, let's see what happens. And I couldn't fast forward to the end. I had to wait. But that's crazy. Really quickly before we wrap it up, live. Adelaide is back this year. Last year they brought back that, or they didn't bring back, they created the party hole at Australia, in Australia, should I say. You had Brooks Kepka brother, which I'm blanking on his first name. Um, Chase. Chase shooting a hole in one. People going absolutely insane. Uh, and millions of dollars of damage to the uh to the, cor- to the course i've ever heard <laughs> the that. course That's right the, the yeah the the members were stoked uh but this year they got anthony kim coming on there and dude like he's been liking a lot of my my comments that i'm reaching out to him on like hey dude like i even i asked him like because he's always wearing like the jordan one lows now that are spikeless and i was just like hey have you always been a spikeless guy he's like no but because i'm older it helps out with my ankles and my in my uh and my knees or whatever. And I was like, oh, cool. He responded. He sees that we exist. He knows four dads golf. Okay. He's been liking some other little comments, but like, it's cool to see. I, I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for the guy. I've, I've been, I've been in his corners since day one and Julio's going to get the girl dad polo at some point, uh, because you're a girl dad. You need yeah. it. <laughs> you're, you're a girl <laughs> dad. Much it. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, this is the first, I think, event for Live within the last few weeks ever since, I think, at least the Masters, um, because, I mean, before the Masters. Uh, but going into it, I don't really know who to who to expect to do hot, you know, besides the top guys. I mean, the good thing is we get to watch it tomorrow night. That's cool, you know, because it'll be yeah. in Australia. But if you have the opportunity to go to that tournament, whether it was for media or just to go there to be and watch the tournament, it was paid for. You could pick your family if you wanted to. Would you do it? Yeah, why not? That's oh, a yeah. long freaking trip. <laughs> yeah. Wait, this weekend's a Zurich, right? For the PGA Tour, potentially. You tell me. Yeah, I honestly I think don't know. Yeah, they're playing at TPC Louisiana, and then yeah, they have. And then it looks like the CJ, the CJ Cup. Bryson Byron Nelson is also this weekend. No, it can't be both. Wait, hold on. 
I think it no, is. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's the week after. Oh, that's May. That's May second. May second. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. So you got the 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 Zurich Classic, which I think this is the one that you group up. And this sounds terrible, being a four day a, a golf podcast, but I, I believe this is the one where they team up, right? You have the teams, and I think Rory is actually playing with um, Shane Lowry, mm. which should be an interesting group, but um, mainly because I think they're. Both from Ireland? Is Shane from Ireland? I think he's from Ireland too, right? Yeah, I think so. But uh yeah, I mean like he's got red hair. <laughs> good enough. He fits the bill. <laughs> we should ask Patty. They all know each other. <laughs> <laughs> they stick together. Irish stick yeah. together. Uh but uh we yeah, got New Orleans would be a fun tournament to go to. That's for sure. Yeah. Which one are you gonna be watching? You gonna be watching both? You gonna be watching whatever you can, whatever you remember to turn just on? What, just whatever I can in between, Miss Rachel. <laughs> thank goodness for the thank goodness for the phone, right, man? Yeah, I know, right? Well, no, because no, because if I have my phone out and she's looking and she sees that I'm looking at something, she's gonna be like, "Oh, dad, dad, see, dad, dad, see." I'm like, "Nope, no." <laughs> No, <laughs> get away. And she's, she's like at that stage right now, too, where it's like she doesn't like, no, like today we went oh, to the dude. park, dude. We went to the park and it was like she was having such a good time on the swing. And there's this other little one year old who wants to get on the swing. I mean, Adelina's just sitting there, just like, yeah, like not even saying we, she's just like, yeah, like this is my swing. Back up. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> yeah. And so, so then, so then I'm like, okay, you ready to go up? And then I pick her up, and dude, she like just like locks herself to be like square. And I'm like, okay, hold on, like bring oh her in close. And then she's just losing it. Then I put her on the slide, and she's like, ah, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> dude, dude, that's kids. That's kids, man. Like Carter, he'll literally yeah. climb up to like the top of like the uh, not the jungle gym, but like the little castles that they have for the kids, you know, the, the top yeah. of the slide or whatever. And then if any other kid comes up and be like, ah, ah, I'm like, dude, you're literally just standing here for like five minutes. No one's up here. Yeah. You're not doing anything. You're not going down the slide. It's too high. You're too scared. But as soon as anyone walks up, you freak out and you're like, no, 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 no. Like what? You're not the king of the castle, dude. Like move out of the way. I know you're a kid, but I, like, I see, I see that. I see that a lot. Like when we go to, like when we go to the Discovery Bay in in San Francisco, I see that a lot with a lot like a lot of the boys. The boys will get. I mean, they have this massive like treehouse thing with this big old bridge that goes across, mm. and it's like the it's the platform climbing step. So it's like if yeah. you slip, I mean, you just go bing, boom, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. And the boys are so quick to like go up, and the girls are a little bit more methodical. They're like, okay, like I'm on the platform, and then I go, and the boys are. But then when they come down, if there's too many kids around, the boys are always the ones crying at the top. And the girl just like sits on her butt, puts her feet down, rotate, does the next one. They're just going down smooth, smooth, smooth. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, all you hear is just like, there's this one, there's one area. It's always on the left side. So like when Adelina is like, bubbles, bubbles. And all I hear is just this, whin, whin, like, like a siren. <laughs> It's, it's sound pretty, of the police it's funny. Whoop, whoop. yeah yeah it's oh, pretty funny dude man. but but yeah i mean adelina just she's kind of getting to that stage right now and then she's very like you know i want to do my own thing but also be close to me because oh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. she's oh, like yeah. don't go too far carter's like daddy come much. here daddy come here and i'm like dude i'm right yeah. here and if you're looking at your phone he'll be like Daddy, daddy. And I'm like, what? I'm right here. I'm on my phone, but I'm right here. It's like, look, look. And I'm like, ah, all right. Yeah. Fine. All right. Yeah, no. Adelina just wants to like, she'll just like cuddle right up next to me and be like, da da. And I'm like, uh huh. She goes, read book. And I'm like, okay, go get a book. Then she like jumps down and she gets all snuggled up. And then She's like, she gets so intrigued with the, with the book, right? She'll like even repeat certain words where we have this book of like feeling. So it's like, um, it has animals. And so she's like obsessed with the animals. So it'd be like, you know, the, uh, the gorilla is, and she'll be like, shy, gorilla shy. And then she goes, so, and then she goes, so do I. And then it goes like, 
how does the squirrel feel? Or, you know, the squirrel is frightened, frightened. So am I. And then the next one's like koala, right? The koala is sleeping. She'll go sleepy, sleepy. Then she just like is right there. And then it's like all done. And then she'll be like, read book. Read book is the <laughs> one. I'm like, we just read this. <laughs> Dude, Carter, Carter struggles to staying in place for a book. He gets he get he's like, Yeah, let's read the book. Read the book. Okay. Like one page in, he's like, closes it, takes it away. Okay, we're done. Now it's great. That was awesome. All right, all right, cool. We're done. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. But uh so yeah. So Adelina has Adelina has like Disney books. Right where she like she loves Moana, but she calls Moana Mina. Ooh. So like, <laughs> so that's the first story, and she loves it. Just like her favorite song is "You're Welcome," right? So she uh, so she loves it, but it's like two pages in, she'll just come over, and just be like, "All done, all done," and she like throws the book down, and she'll be like, "Coco, Coco," because we have the little Tony box where it plays like the music and stuff. And so she'll be like, Coco, she holds it up. She goes, Re- you know, or uh, remember, remember, she'll be, she'll try and say, remember me. Right. And then we yeah. put it on and she like sits there and she just goes like, <laughs> like, it's like her thing. Toddler dancing is talk. hilarious, dude. It's hilarious. Oh. I, know, I taught, I taught Adelina how to spin today. So I was like, held her hand. I was like, spin. She goes, spin. And then she like acts like she's dizzy and then just like falls on her butt. Dude, Carter's <laughs> always like, dizzy, dizzy. And then he like falls over on per- like on accident because he's actually like, actually like throws himself off. And I'm like, stop. Yeah. You're going to hurt yourself. But I think it's a good spot to wrap up the podcast. We talked about a lot. If you guys haven't already, check out our YouTube. We're up to like 730 something subs. We're trying to get to a thousand. We're trying to get monetized, trying to make some money off this so we can go on these amazing golf trips. That probably won't happen until like 30 years down the road when our kids are taking over the channel. But we appreciate all of your guys' support anyway. And uh, please don't forget to stay fly and go low. And we'll see you guys next week. Have a good week, everybody.